Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, as we know, there has been a lot of activity recently with the ATF and those who purchased the Rare Breed Forced Reset Trigger. Now, we've already done a couple of videos, one about this rather unpleasant visit that this gentleman here got from the ATF, and another one in general about what to do if the ATF shows up at your door. Now, let's talk about something rather specific. Here's the scenario. You purchase the rare breed trigger. Maybe you have one or two of them. Now you're worried that the ATF is going to show up at your place. What do you do about that? Well, I'm going to give you some advice today. Now, this isn't going to be advice that's going to work for everyone, but it's going to be really, really good general advice. So let's spend a few minutes and talk about what can I do with my rare breed trigger before ATF shows up at my door. Okay. The issue we're talking about today is an issue that many lawful and responsible gun owners find themselves in through no fault of their own. You see, when the company Rare Breed started making the forced reset trigger, there was absolutely positively nothing unlawful about it whatsoever. Many, many people, those who are firearms enthusiasts, went out and purchased these triggers for various reasons. But one of the things that they did not have to, hoops they did not have to jump through in order to purchase them were any legal loopholes. Why? Because at the time that all of you purchased one of these rare breed triggers, it was completely lawful. Well, fast forward a couple of years later, now suddenly the ATF, as we know, who gets very, very creative with their interpretation of the law, decides, you know, Actually, we're going to redefine the meaning of machine gun, and in doing so, we're going to draw a trigger and a trigger component alone into the definition of machine gun. How do they do that? Well, here's how. You see, because 26 United States Code, section 5845, defines machine gun as follows. A machine gun is any weapon which shoots, is designed to shoot, or can be readily restored to shoot automatically more than one shot without manual reloading by a single function of the trigger. The term shall also include the frame or receiver of any such weapon and any part designed and intended solely and exclusively or combination of parts designed and intended for use in converting a weapon into a machine gun and any combination of parts from which a machine gun can be assembled if such parts are in the possession or under the control of a person. So the ATF is saying, hey, listen, the technology in this forced reset trigger makes the trigger a component of a machine gun which falls under 26 USC 5845 and therefore it's unlawful contraband. Now we also know in March of this year that the ATF issued another letter as it related to the force reset trigger, this letter right here. Now, we're not going to get into all the details. We've already done a video on that, but let us remember how the letter concluded. Based on ATF's determination, the FRTs that function as described above are machine guns under the NFA and GCA. ATF intends to take appropriate rem remedial action with respect to sellers and possessors of these devices. Current possessors of these devices are encouraged to contact ATF for further guidance on how they may divest possession. If you are uncertain whether the device you possess as a machine gun is defined by the GCA and NFA, please contact your local ATF field office. You may consult the local ATF office's webpage for office contact information. And while I think it is very hospitable of the ATF to do that, let me give you a more simplistic translation of what this letter says. We believe that you have committed a crime and therefore we would like you to contact the law enforcement agency for enforcing those crimes right away to assist us in the investigation. If by chance you're uncertain as to whether or not you committed a crime, but maybe did, well, you two should contact us so we can figure it out together. Now, 
it really doesn't take an attorney who's been doing criminal defense work now for about 25 years to understand that you should not contact and speak with the very law enforcement agency, which has already said they believe that you may have committed a crime. Let's go over the rules once again. What happens if ATF does show up at your door? Remember this, if they have a search warrant, the game is over. You need to get out of the way. A search is being conducted. Come hell or high water. It is a court order. They need, do not need consent. There are certain places that they may or may not be able to go depending on what the warrant authorizes. If they are there and they ask for your permission to search, that's because they don't have any other legal method by which they can do it. They need your consent. Do you have the right to refuse that consent? You most certainly do. Can that be used against you? In almost all instances, it cannot. It is the exercise of a constitutional right. Should you decline the invitation? I believe you should. Some people say, well, what if I got nothing to hide? Hey, law enforcement is there asking to search your resident. What you believe they may be looking for and what they may actually be looking for are two different things. I, too, would politely decline in that situation. Now, remember, there are two forms that can be presented to you. There is the 3400.1, which is basically a consent to forfeiture, uh, consent to destruction, waiver of notice, and all of that. And that form should not be signed under, under any circumstance, under no circumstance, that the 3400.1 be signed. Now, there's another form, 3400.23, which is an inventory of any item that is taken from your home. Yes, should that form be signed? Yeah, you should carefully look at it, make sure there is an absolute and accurate accounting of anything that was taken, and you should sign that form. Signature on that form is not a consent to anything. It is not an acknowledgement of anything. It is not the constitute the waiver of any rights. Now, the last category. I got one of these triggers, and I'm worried that the ATF is going to show up. What should I do? You're not going to like this advice, but I think that this is the safest advice. And this comes from a discussion that I had with an ATF field agent. Remove the trigger from the firearm. Take photographs of the trigger. Once it's removed from the firearm, hopefully there's some sort of an identifying mark to it. And then take photographs of it once you have destroyed it. You need to destroy that trigger. You need to keep photographic evidence. And if ATF does show up in your, at your door, should you present them with the photographic evidence? No, you should not. But you probably should confer with counsel now. I don't think you need to hire counsel necessarily, but in some instances you may. But you need to have a conversation with an attorney, have an attorney on speed dial, have somebody who's ready to go so that if they do show up, they can assist with the dissemination of that information in a way that is both productive to the investigation, but also conducive to protecting your constitutional rights. So the advice is, if you got one, you probably ought to take it out of the firearm and photograph and document the destruction of that trigger. Now, I recognize that I'm going to get a lot of nasty comments down in the comment section that this is total BS, that this is completely unconstitutional, that the ATF is tyrannical. I agree with all of that. These videos are not meant to endorse the ATF's position. Remember our role here at Washington Gun Law is to teach you what the law is, how the law is being enforced so that you can make educated decisions about how to operate within the confines of it, or if you choose not to operate within the confines of the law, at least you are aware of the consequences of those choices. Listen, I know you're going to have more questions about this, and if you do, remember you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember, part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we preach all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Hey everyone, Bill here at Washington Gun Law. Hey, I wanted to remind all of you that Washington Gun Law does not participate in giveaways, especially giveaways of firearms. I know there's been some bots or other things going on on these videos saying, congratulations, you've won a firearm. Hey, maybe you did, but it didn't come from Washington Gun Law. We are an educational organization. We're not really in the business of giving away guns. Listen, we've crossed over 63,000 subscribers and it wouldn't be for all, unless it was all of you, the law and responsible gun owners out there nationwide. Thank you very much from the bottom of our heart for all your support. All of you, stay safe.